You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market. From unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block. With your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaud from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionFit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionFit.com. The Option Block is brought to you by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. And now, get ready to hit the option block. All right, everybody, that rocking tune means it is time to rock out once again with the Option Block coming at you live every Monday and Thursday, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. You know how to get us live, Mixler.com, that's 1X. M-I-X-L-R is how you spell it. And, of course, send in those questions, those comments, those insights. We do love to hear from you guys. And let's see who we got joining me on the old all-star panel today. Let's start off. Let's go out. Let's go out to the realm that is at war, and we need someone holding down the seat of the Iron Throne to keep it all together. Because we are joined once again by Mr. Colin, Song of Ice and Fire himself, holding down the Fidelity Hot Seat this week. Mr. Song of Ice and Fire, welcome back to the program, sir. Oh, thanks for having me on. I've uh, got a little bit of a uh, uh, heat wave this weekend, so... A little strange, melting away the, uh, the snow that just fell, so... Did it get up to like a balmy 38... What did it get up to out there? Yeah, we got like mid 40s. It was crazy. Crazy town, sir. Uh oh, that means we might have to check in. We might see the ice rink may have melted as well. Let's find out. We are also joined by the rocking ist of lobsters himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com by way of Carmeline Capital. Mr. G, welcome to the show. And let's get right to the point, sir. Did the ice rink survive? Um, actually, it. it- it was frozen, then it thawed, and now I'm putting more water in. So it's it's touch and go. We we might have a shot. We might have a shot. We need live live video updates, live stream of your triage to help keep the ice rink alive. Set up a GoFundMe to support the ice rink, the Jovanazzi ice rink. Live stream. Stay tuned to it. Gripping, compelling drama here. Listeners, Mother Nature giveth, and she taketh away. She's heartless. Taking away that ice ring from his children. And last but not least, I do believe he's back from parts unknown. I suppose there's only one way to find out. As we are joined now by Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, are you back from your bunker in undisclosed location, sir? I might be. 
I ah, don't want yes. to say. It's, it's kind of fun being from parts unknown. I mean, it's, uh, uh, but yeah, back to the usual spot again. Uh, I just had to go out and take care of some business on the road the last couple of weeks, and uh, I'm back. He's back, and so are we. So without further ado, let's dive right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show. We break down what is trading, and you know, it's been the on-again, off-again dance for the better part of 16-plus months now, and it's on again right now. Some nice talk coming out of China and D.C. here, of course, about the trade war. It looks like they're close to inking some more deals out there. So the market liking what they're seeing. Most of the major indices firmly in the green today. NASDAQ leading the charge up nearly 1.1%. Goldilocks of S&P right in the middle there up a little bit more, almost 0.9%, close to it. And the Dow, ever the laggard, only up about two-thirds of a percent or so. Gold, of course, taking a bit of a break off 1.6 points or so. So right around that 1480 level or so. So still shy of that 1500 level. And WTI ticking over the 60 handle, 60.2 uh, or so out there, which is interesting. Of course, you like all things WTI and everything else, metals, a lot of that on the, on the show last week. Check out Twifo if you haven't done so already. And, of course, all that green on the screen means our old friend, Bix Cash, taking a bit of a break today. Got down as low as right around 11.75. Coming into showtime was right around the low of the day. That puts it around almost three handles lower than where it was last show, about two and three quarters points. It's since bounced a little bit off that, threatening the 12 handle again right around 11.90 or so, but still off nearly three points from where it was this time last show. Our old friend VVIX, a.k.a. the volatility of volatility, also coming in a wee bit off nearly 10 handles from where it was last show, down to about a 94. Remember, it was north of that triple-digit level for a while there on last show. And, of course, VXX is going away. <laughs> down not quite two handles, about 1.7 handles from where it was on our last show, so shy of the 15 handle now, 1490. That's a lot. That's a lot of going away in a short period of time over there on the dark side of VXX. But since he's he was away and now he's back, let's start with him, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. What is lighting up your tape out there in your regular location today? Never, ever, 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 ever in the history of the entire stock market. Has there ever been a better time to sell than today? Uh, it's an exciting day. It's a new market, all-time highs. Uh, we, it, and, and it's still, it's all based on, from what it looks like, a maybe. Uh, it looks like it's going to happen. Deal with China is what it's looking like. So uh, the fact that we have this strong of a market on maybe news, then uh, I, I think that's pretty exci- uh, an exciting case to be made for the, the bulls. Um, you know, it's with all-time highs. You always have to take it with a grain of salt, especially in times like this. Because keep in mind, about a week and a half ago, I think it was, or maybe it was two weeks ago, it uh, looks like we're not going to have another trade deal with China until after the election's over. So um, you don't know in things like this. But uh, the fact that we're doing so well on a maybe kind of, sort of, I mean, you can't really take anything seriously a lot of times with these announcements. But I think it's definitely a good sign for the bulls with things. Uh, the other thing is that uh, silver is not getting crushed uh, like it has been uh, when we're having these announcements. Uh, and so uh, silver is actually up uh, half a percent on the day. Nothing huge, but it's actually higher. Uh, financials, XLF is taking it around that 31 mark again. So it's definitely making some progress there. Uh, but the other thing of note, and I'm just curious, I'm excited to hear Andrew's take on this when we get to him, is uh, the VIX and that. Uh, if, should we get another four or five percentage points in the S and P for the rest of this year, and we start getting uh, pretty, uh, a pretty a decent sized movement, not a, a maybe kind of wall of worry movement or whatever? I'm curious if he thinks that we might hit single digits in the VIX uh, in the next month or so if, if we do continue to rally. Now, obviously, if uh, we come down, I don't think we'll hit single digits, but I'm curious to hear his take on that because right now there's just a lot of attractive premium buying opportunities. Uh, where I live. And so very exciting to watch in that uh, I, I know on this show, uh, you're either a degenerate premium buyer or you're a degenerate premium seller and you're on the dark side, whichever side you're on. I've noticed that throughout my uh, 800 or so episodes on this show. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of opportunity, in my opinion, uh, for buying premium out there in the markets in general. 
Uh, so that's what's lighting it up with me. Um, a lot of individual names, but uh, if we can save those for a little bit later. And uh, one thing that I am going to do today as kind of a public service to our listeners is that this week is X Div week uh, for SPY. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about this. I'm going to dedicate a whole stri- uh, every every chance I get to talk on this show today, I'm going to mention something about it. Uh, because if you have in the you have short in the money calls, you need to be aware of what's going on with SPY. And I'll talk more about it every time I get to talk today, more details to come. I was just about to call you a degenerate premium buyer. You beat me to it, sir. So well done for you. And yes, that is a, a beneficial public service to all of our listeners because that spy dividend, it creeps up on people. They always forget about it. And then we know a ton of our audience likes to overwrite some calls out there. So always worth reminding them what lurks around XDiv time in spy land. Let's go out now to that ever turbulent land of Westeros where the Song of Ice and Fire is holding court. Mr. Song of Ice and Fire, sir. What are the Fidelity Legions up to today on this pretty strong upside day in the market, sir? Yeah, so uh, we have a couple of regulars on there. Um, one of them I, I would just have to consider a regular now. Uh, top of the list was Boeing, uh, where we had 73% of the orders placed by Fidelity customers were buy orders. Uh, currently, Boeing's trading at 328.09. Uh, it's down 13 spot 56, which is just under 4% down. Uh, this was on headlines about them considering uh, cutting or even halting the production on its 737 max line. Right now, it's below all its moving averages or below its moving averages, and it also it broke below its lower uh, Bollinger Band currently. Um, when we look at the call to put ratio, uh, right now it's, uh, one spot zero four called every one put traded compared to its 90 day average of one spot four three called every one put traded. So, um, and that's on the back of more put activity going on. Uh, so next one, probably not a regular, uh, is, uh, we have, uh, Ameren Corporation making the list today at the number two spot. Uh, 71% of the orders placed were buy orders. It's currently trading 23.25, which is down 87 cents, which is uh, just over 3.5% down. Uh, they were downgraded by an analyst today. Um, it is, with that being stated, still above its moving averages. And initially when it opened up, it did break above its upper Bollinger Band, but it sold off since the to actually pull back inside that Bollinger Band. Uh, the call-to-put ratio um, is an interesting one. It, uh, it right now is uh, four-spot, nine-three call to every one put traded, where its 90-day average is uh, two-spot, seven-three call to every put traded. Uh, and it's already at almost four times its day, uh, 90-day average volume uh, at this point in the day. At the number three spot, we have Apple. Uh, now, Apple right now is trading at two eighty oh seven. It's uh, it's up almost five dollars on the day, which is uh, about one and three quarter percent up. Uh, it's above all its moving averages. Uh, it did break above the Bollinger Band uh, and actually broke through that upper Bollinger Band. The call to put ratio is sitting at one spot seven two called every one put traded, uh, compared to its ninety day average of one spot three three call to, to every one put traded. The number four spot is now I'm gonna consider a a regular at this point, which is Roku. Uh Roku right now is trading at one thirty seven uh twenty four, which is up um four dollars and seventy four cents which is uh, over 3.5% up so far today. So the price right now is moved back to push uh, on that 50-day moving average. It is still below the 20 and 50, but it is above that 200-day moving average. Uh, and it it did push below that lower Bollinger Band, but has rallied back inside it uh, currently. The call-to-put ratio is sitting at a once, uh, basically one-and-a-half call, so everyone put traded. Uh, where the 90-day average is lower than that at one spot, four call to every one put. And lastly, I'm not sure if anyone's heard about this car company, uh, Tesla. Uh, and they have uh, right now about 60% of the orders placed by Fidelity customers are sell orders. It's currently trading 380.37, which is up 
just about $22 per share, uh, which is over 6% up so far here today. Uh, so the price is above its moving averages. It did break above that upper Bolger band uh, with today's action. And it uh, has about one and two-thirds call to every one put traded um, compared to its one spot, one call to every one uh, put traded. So that rounds out our top five of what the Fidelity customers are currently trading. Thank you for that, Mr. Song of Ice and Fire. And last but not least, we have the rockingest of lobsters. Mr. Rock Lobster, I believe Mr. Uncle Mike had some questions for you. So what do you have to say about his queries on the VIX? And what is lighting up your tape out there today, sir? Um, well, um, we are very close to a single-digit ball. <laughs> um, so I would say we don't have much farther to go. Um Will it get there? I think there is still, um, I think there's still enough overwhelm. Like you got like the impeachment thing, the trade thing. It's still, I don't think it's a nine ball market yet. And also, when we got hit those lows last year, there's a big anticipation of, as I recall, um, a, uh, you know, the tax thing going through, and there's a lot of real bullish sentiment on that. Um, I mean, basically, we're just trying to, I think right now, the trade thing is not totally clear, let's be honest. Um, it, the rhetoric doesn't seem as bad. You certainly didn't see any weekend tweets that were worse, you know, and you have VIX is at, I think, close to a year low. Um, uh, but um, the, um, but as far as this goes, um, I think we can get there, but and I we need some of those things to just be fixed. Um, impeachment thing is still an overhang wild card, even though you know it, the market seems to think it's not, nothing's really going to happen. The trade thing is still is still there. So uh, you know the earnings were okay, and this trade deal kind of happened, and we're at our thirty two hundred number. So it feels like all the things that should have happened have kind of happened, you know, that the new NAFTA deal is done. So I I would think though, the market kind of has to sit like this and be, and be happy at this level for a while for ball to go for VIX to go lower. Um, We're now pushing mid January, um, which is kind of impeachment Senate stuff. I don't, again, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. What I will say, though, is a lot of the short-term risk premium um, has come out of the VIX futures. Um, some of that extreme stuff that we saw a couple weeks ago has, has receded somewhat. However, the way I look at vol, we have kind of a, a fair value number for vol at this point in the cycle. And the VIX cash, the Jan future at 1470 is still a little high. Um so they're still they're keeping those futures kind of juicy um, for the reasons I think I described. And if history has been in any indication, um, that premium really doesn't release till very late in the cycle. So I think where um, a lot of uh, I think a lot of where I think where premium is for Tucson's question. Is it still in the term structure because it's way above our fair value numbers? So that stuff is still bid. And historically, we've seen that mostly that's people trying to like be long the market and long like VIX in some way or some skew like, you know, uh, puts in the SPX or something like that. And it kind of translates into those futures being more expensive, which is where we are now. So I think like to Tucson's point, I, unless we have the market kind of calms down because we've gone straight up now for about two weeks, which tends to pull the curve up a little bit. It makes VIX, it's harder for VIX to go down, I, you know, which sounds counterintuitive, but when VIX, when we go straight up, it's hard for VIX to go down because uh, downside puts in the indexes, it takes a while for them to come in um, because liquidity providers short those and they're short underlying. I know this sounds confusing, but it's, it, it's a lot of uh, math basically, that keeps it where it is today. Um, So until we have a little bit better news, I don't think we would see a single digit within a month um, unless everything went perfectly. So I would just – that this 12 handle has been pretty solid the whole year, and 
and I think it's kind of what I'll call or the mid 11s until the trade deal is sort of we've moved past that. I think it's going to hard be hard for us to get below it. So that's the simple answer there. Um, I don't even know if that was simple, but that's my answer. <laughs> I was just going to say nothing about that was simple, but it was all good. <laughs> at the end of the day. And you're right, it is kind of somewhat counterintuitive. It takes a while for that juice to come out. And until the juice comes out, you can't see VIX get below those critical thresholds. And I know some folks would like to see, others not so much. Let's see what some folks are up to out here in the marketplace. As you might imagine, a pretty active day, probably even more active than you might, have, you might guess, given the fact that people have been rumoring this trade war deal for a while. In fact, we saw phase one of it, quote-unquote, Coming late last week, so it seemed like the rest of us may be a bit of a done deal. And yet, we're still seeing a lot of paper on the tape today. VIX blowing the doors off uh, what it's been up to lately. Remember, we've said for a while now on Bob Views and other, even this program, that VIX has been struggling to maintain that 400,000 ADV. Well, it's going to go up a little bit after today. That ADV is a little bit north of 400K, but they're doing over already 700, nearly three quarters of a million contracts on the tape out there for VIX land. It's been a while since we've seen VIX threatening that 1 million level and might be out there seeing that today. So we'll, we'll stay tuned for that one. A lot of paper going up out there. SPY, same deal. ADV is right around 2.5 million. It put up almost exactly 2.5 million as of pretty much right now out there uh, in SPY, SPX, similar deal. The ADV is about 1.1 million. It's at about exactly 1.1 million. So we're seeing a full ADV's worth of volume go up already in both of those major products. The Q, pretty much a similar deal. The Qs are around 470 for their ADV and it's about... 425,000 out there right now, so threatening a full day's worth of paper in the in the NASDAQ, and the Russell's the only laggard IWM, the, the ADV is closing in on 300K, and they're at about 220,000 out there right now, so still active, but not quite lighting up the tape the way the other major indices are, turning our attention to the individual equity options out there, let's see what's lighting up our top 10 here, most active Equity options, and this is again as of a few minutes ago. We just pulled this, so a number ten cost you exactly a buck fifty to break into the top ten today. That'll get you to our old friend, as Mr. Song of Ice and Fire said, kind of like a a stalwart now in the top ten. This is Roku, the set top boxes that just keep on giving out there from a volume, from a volatility, from from an overall uh, interest perspective. You guys love it. Clearly, still at the number 10. Usually, it's a little bit higher today at uh, a mere number 10 with 150,000. Number nine, good old AMRN, buck 53 on the tape. Number eight, our old friends here across the street haven't seen them in the top 10 in a little bit. This is Boeing with 159,000 contracts. Number seven, Facebook with 178,000. Number six, good old Softy, buck 87 on the tape for them. Number six, Micron. With 225,000. Number four, AMD, another perennial top tenor out there these days. 232,000 contracts for them. Number three, the aforementioned Tesla getting up there again. 442,000 contracts on the tape out there for Tesla. Let's just see what, uh, how much they're moving today. Oh, up nice whopping 22 handles <laughs> or nearly uh, 7%. Uh, as, uh, let's see, oh yeah, some optimism out of China apparently is enough for their factories, is enough to send this bad boy moving. 22, threatening that 400 level again out there in Tesla, and clearly threatening some size paper out there from an options perspective as well. Number two, one of our frequent offenders out there of late. It kind of wasn't on our radar for some time, and then now all of a sudden it's out there quite a bit, is Danaher. This is ticker symbol DHR at exactly 152 right now. So it's up about two and a third percent and 575,000 contracts on the tape today. So pretty active out there. And if you're saying to yourself, wow, what the heck is number one? And how much paper did they do? I think you can probably guess number one because you haven't heard their name yet. They're usually a number one, but they're even managing to outpace Danaher, which is lighting it up yet again out there. Apple, 1,000 contracts more, 576, getting it to the number one spot out here on our top 10. So a pretty active day across the board. Of course, uh, news of a detente with China. Good news for Apple. So uh, interesting stuff out there. But Danaher, man, continuing to light it up. Let's look really quickly where most biased paper is out there today. That'd be Facebook, 73% of it. Actually, I take it back, AMRN with about 83% of it on the call side. And Danaher actually is the other way, 63% bias towards the put. So some of our first top 10 paper that has a strong bias towards the puts out there. 
which is uh, kind of interesting in and of itself. We're always talking calls out there. If you're wondering about AMRN, this is Amarin Corp. It's a biotech out of New Jersey. Uh, so uh, interesting, interesting stuff cooking out there as well. Speaking of uh, all stuff cooking, if you guys are interested in earnings, there still are some names popping off this week. We got the aforementioned Micron coming out on Wednesday. FedEx is tomorrow. Navistar as well. General Mills on Wednesday. Uh, Rite Aid and Nike on Thursday as well. I think you're going to be hearing about Nike again in a little bit. And then CarMax and good old BlackBerry. <laughs> Engine that keeps on trucking out there. BlackBerry on Friday as well. So there still are some earnings. Let's look at FedEx really quickly. We have the earnings report courtesy of our friends over there in Orat's land. Coming into time of this report, FedEx reporting on the 17th after the bell. So tomorrow, uh, they're at the stock is at about exactly 159. They were pricing in a little over nine bucks. And in the past, they've moved a little bit under seven. So they're a little bit rich out there uh, from a straddle perspective. So we'll see how that. How that plays out. If you like that kind of data and a lot more, it's all available for you for free. Theoptionsinsider.com. Click on that Options News and Articles tab to begin your journey as we keep continuing our journey into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, let's get to it. The weird, the wild, the wondrous paper. That came across our radar as highlighted by our Eye of Sauron out there. And, you know, we like to have a little, a little mix. Some small names, some weird names you never heard of, some cheapies. And occasionally, some names you may have heard of sneaking onto the list as well. Like our number one name here today. This is a footwear company. Also a company known for paying extreme amounts of money to athletes for sponsorship. This is Nike. Ticker symbol, of course, NKE. I just mentioned them earlier in our top 10 most actives today. Well, some of that paper clearly coming under the uh, the auspices of our Eye of Sauron as well. Ticker symbol, of course, NKE, Nike Trading, 99.13 right now, up about a buck 40. That's, of course, about 1.5 or 1.4% right now because it's right around 100 bucks. Uh, let's see what this thing has done over the past year. It's been a pretty strong year, looks like, in the footwear category. A year ago, they were trading a little bit shy of 70 bucks, so about 30 handles lower than where they are right now. And it's kind of been a long, slow slog to the upside with a few sell-offs there in between. They got up to around almost 90 bucks in April, and then they sold off down to about 77 in May, then bounced right back up to almost 90 again in July, then got their wings clipped again back down to 78 and changed. So it hasn't been all upside. There's been some sell-offs there as well. But ever since August, they've been pretty much trending back to the upside. And right now, they're pretty much right around their 52-week high, a little bit shy of it. It's 99.33, so pretty much at... The upper end of that 52-week range, like I mentioned, they do have earnings coming up in a couple of days. So let's see what the market is up to ahead of this earnings palooza on Thursday. Looks like somebody, Mr. Rock Lobster, likes himself some Nike to the tune of 11,250 of these Dece 102 calls. So fairly out of the money, not a ton. They're about a little less than three bucks out of the money. Pretty near term, too. This is D. So clearly, clearly a bit of an earnings play going up out here. This was, these went up for 76 cents so at the time. This was actually through the offer. They were offered at 74 cents. These went up for 76. So maybe they needed to, to work it a little bit to get some size. Maybe it was a little tiny order lurking in the book, gumming up that NBBO. Either way, through the offer, again, there are earnings coming out on the 19th. Also worth noting, this one went up tied. So it went up over there. On uh, on the Philly, so usually on the floors where you see these tide orders going up, and that means they had stock against it. So they, of course, came up, probably bought these calls, and then they sold stock uh, against it. I don't know if I have – actually, I think I do have the – I think the print was 98.67 where they put up the stock. So a wee bit lower than it is right now. So that changes the narrative a little bit because we know there was a hedge leg to this. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, not our usual pre-earnings swing for the fences because they did a stock leg with this as well. What's your what's your spidey sense telling you <laughs> for these uh, tied pre-earnings calls in Nike, sir? 
Well, it seems like that Phil looks pretty good right now. 76 cents. He's up 28 cents. Yeah, he's looking good on those. Uh, Not on the stock, obviously, but he'll, he'll make up for it on the options. <laughs> well, didn't he pay 76 cents for them? On this? Uh, for the calls, yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. So I... Um, this doesn't look like an unreasonable, like, earnings spec. Um, I would think, um, you know, I would think, um, um, uh, you know, just paying a dollar for a call at three bucks out of the money, I think it has a shot, and you're probably not going to see a whole lot of decay between now and the 19th on that option. So I, I, it feels like one of those, like, free riders until um, the earnings come out, to be honest. What about doing them tied? Uh, does that float your boat? Pre-earnings tied? I'm, I'm always kind of iffy on that. What about you? Uh, I mean, you know the deal, right? They're going to crush the ball one way or another. So when you do it tied, now they're they're betting on like sort of a $6 move uh, right around that area at least. So, yeah, you would, need a, you would need a substantial move for that tied trade to work. Like, you know, just for, Nike going to 103 is not going to cut it. Yeah, is that, it's not, it seems like you're making it a little bit of almost of, of a bridge too far with the tied leg. Because obviously you're right. Then you're trading essentially the vol component. And we all know what usually happens – after earnings, so you're making it even harder for yourself. So uh, that's why I'm not pre-earnings. You know, we talk about pre-earnings trades in general, being not huge fans. Uh, but in general, if you're doing it this way, not not saying I want people to go out there and just swing for the fences and buy premium willy nilly. But when you're adding this tide leg, it makes it a little bit more challenging now for this fellow. So I'll tell you what we're going to do because we're nice charitable folks here, and this is the near term one. We can come back to this one, maybe even even on our next show. See how he fared, Mister Rock Lobster. We'll come back to these. Pretty soon and see how our friend did, not just with the options, but of course with that stock leg. I don't have his delta, but I'm assuming he did him uh, delta neutral, not one-to-one. Obviously, one-to-one would change that narrative entirely, a different beast. So let us know what you think. Do you like doing stuff tied? Obviously, sometimes you have to do a stock leg to get these things done as well. I understand that from an execution perspective. It might be a necessary component, but again, uh, it makes it makes these trades a wee bit more interesting, shall we say, for our parsing here. On the odd block, if nothing else. Let's move on to some more some more straight up options action. We're going out this time. If that was too well known for you, you got to get a little bit more obscure, but still pricey. We got you covered with our next name. This is IFF, aka International Flavors and Fragrances. I know you know this name. I know you wake up every morning, you have your coffee, you brush your teeth, and you check your quotes on IFF. At least if you're like me, that's what you do. And so uh, trading today, pretty much exactly 120 out there. Not a good day. for I actually just ticked off. I lied. 119.99. <laughs> uh, but it's off nearly 14 handles, a little over 10% on this name. So a rough day here for IFF. Sounds like a little bit of corporate action is the culprit for this. Uh, this IFF is going to be acquired or merged, depending on how you read it, with DuPont's nutrition unit in a 26.2% a billion deal. So apparently there's a bit of a bidding war and, uh, and uh, these guys, IFF winning out here in the end, spending, spending, <laughs> spending quite a bit here. It sounds like to do it. And so uh, the stock taking a wee bit of a drubbing as you, as you'd expect if they're shelling out, uh, sounds like they're shelling out 26 billion. So a lot of this obviously corporate action driven. Let's look at what the stock's been up to over the course of the past year. A year ago, it was higher than where it is right now. It was about 132. So about 12 handles north of where it is. Then it rallied up to almost uh, about 146 in February. Then it got its wings clipped back, back down to about 127 in February. It kind of languished there for a while. Then rallied back up to about June to about 152. Stayed up there for a while. That was pretty much right around there. 52-week high for the year, and then by beginning of August, they got clipped again. By mid-August, they were trading 108, so down nearly 50 handles from their high there. So bad times in uh, in August, maybe some bad earnings, maybe some other corporate action stuff going on out there. And then they rallied a bit up to 127 again, so got about a qu- about half of that back in September, and then they kind of languished down to 120 again until recently, back early in November, they started rallying again. Up to nearly those highs again, up to about 142 again in December. So this name's kind of been all over the map over the course of this past year. i got to imagine a lot of this corporate action driven. And then uh, in this early, actually about a week ago, they started getting their wings clipped again. 142, then down to 134, and now down to where it is right now, 120 on the heels of spending some cash out there as well. So an interesting topsy-turvy year here for international flavors 
and fragrances. Surprise, surprise. They make flavors and they make fragrances. That's a great description for the company. Uh, let's see what was up here. What did our Eye of Sauron discover for us out here today? 115 puts in January. So a little bit out of the money puts here. Going up for 90 cents. A little bit off the offer. There were 70 cents at 95 when they went up. Not quite 5,000 times. About 4,700 of these bad boys. These are open and going up over there on the Arca. So Mr. Rock Lobster, looks like we got some open and downside put action. Could be our friend here. Took a look at this chart. Maybe he's been wearing this chart for the better part of this year. And he's like, you know what? I'm done. I can't, I can't, I can't stomach this, this turbulence anymore. I want to stop myself out at the 115 strike. If that's the case, he picked an interesting time frame. January isn't that far to buy some protection. Uh, so interesting stuff. They already think maybe our friend is just specking on some more near-term downside ahead of all this crazy corporate action here, sir. Also, I should note they have earnings, but not in this cycle. They're in February, February 12th. Mr. Rock Lobster, what do you think about these corporate action-driven puts here in international flavors and fragrances? Um, interesting. I mean, they're, they're winners right now. Um, I'm trying to figure out, I guess the market does not like this corporate action. I mean, you think with a name like international flavors and fragrances that you're kind of hitting everything. You're international. You're selling flavors <laughs> and fragrances. You got it all, baby. All the Fs anyone could want. You know, I so you know, um, interesting. Um, but as, for, as of right now, I mean, they're right on the puts. So an interesting looking, um, um, an interesting looking trade that looks correct so far. That's all I got to say. Very interesting indeed. All the Fs you could possibly want: international flavors and fragrances. We have to move on to our final name here on the odd block. This is another kind of. Obscure one for you, which we like. We like seeing some weird names here on the odd block. This last one is Meta- excuse me, almost a Metallica. <laughs> That'd be a fun one as well. Metallica options. But no, it was Medallia. Medallia Inc. Ticker symbol MDLA. This is a customer experience management company out of San Fran. So that tells me literally nothing about what they do. <laughs> uh, trading right now about 3140 off about a quarter out there today. Over the course of the past year, they were trading. A year ago, they are trading 37 bucks, so north of where they are right now. They gapped up in, maybe we're fairly new on the scene here, because my, my chart's only taking me back to July, unless there's some issue with this data. Maybe they uh, went public not too long ago. But they got up to about, uh, looks like about 43, almost 45 bucks in July, and that seems like that was the high uh, for the year. And then right down by the time September came around, they were trading 26 again, so Got their wings clipped pretty hard there. And they've kind of been bouncing in this 26 to 30-odd range for the better part ever since ever since September there. They've kind of been dancing in this range. And right now they're kind of on the upper end again, right around 31 and change. So coming off a little bit today. Let's see what our Eye of Sauron picked up out here today. Looks like it's some puts. And looks like one of your old favorite trades, Mr. Rock Lobster. It's the line in the sand puts this time coming up. On the 25 strike, so we bit out of the money, about six handles and change. Going up in Jan, the Jan 25 puts for 25 cents, which was right off the bid. These were not surprisingly pretty wide. This name not exactly trading a lot. These, these puts were 20 cents at 75. So enjoy that market. Uh, 4,741 of these going up in the print that caught our eye, but it's worth noting a lot more have gone up on the day, a total of over 10,000 total on the day. So Mr. Rocklops, has someone drawn... A pretty sizable line in the sand here in Medallia, Inc. Could be someone deciding, hey, at that level, I want to pick up a bunch more. Could be someone just looking for a little bit of the old harvesting of the risk premium. Worth noticing, or worth noting, I should say, they have earnings, but not in this cycle. The earnings are on March 11th. So, Mr. Rock Lobster, some non-earnings, but pretty sizable line in the sand here. And everyone's favorite customer experience management company, Medallia, Inc., sir. It, it is. I think this is a line of the. This is line of the line of the sand supreme. Um, uh, picking a uh, you know relatively uh, low strike, low of the year. Uh, it just has all the hallmarks of of that trade. Um, so, I, what, what's the return? They're about one percent to January. Not terrible. Um, and you pick up the stock at twenty five bucks. I don't know. It doesn't seem too bad to me, to be honest. Um, 
I know nothing about Medallia, and I don't know what kind of experience they want to give us. Um, the company offers a range of products, CX, BX, EX, and PX, whatever that is. So if you don't have enough X in your life, you can go buy some at Medallia. Um, but uh, uh, it looks like it's a company that, uh, uh, you know, technology company, blah, blah, blah. But it looks like somebody's trying to scoop some stock there. That's... That is what it feels like. Oh, and I will say one other thing just for listeners. Uh, I trade Twitter. I do have a bit of a long position in it. And somebody is trading a lot of the December 27, 31 calls today. Just as a little, a little, extra, a little extra gas for our listeners out there that are interested in such things. A little extra nugget uh, of info. Get all the X's at uh, MDL. So you want your F's, you go to IFF, you got your X's. You go to MDLA. By the way, listeners, they did go public this past year. They went public in July at 21 bucks, which is why my chart <laughs> stops in, or starts in July. Uh, yeah, they were expected to go public at 16 to 18, and then public at 21. So maybe someone out here, obviously they rallied high and then kind of came off, which is the, uh, the chart for a lot of IPOs these days. Uh, maybe someone deciding he wants to scoop some more at a price a little bit north of that IPO. Tell you what we'll do here, listeners. We'll come back to our friends. Here in uh, the X's, and we'll we'll watch these bad boys. A lot of a lot of names to watch, listeners. As we keep on rolling, you know what you guys like to watch? It's your spy divvies. So let's get to it. A little bit of the old strategy block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for the strategy block. All right, it's Monday. He's back from parts unknown, ready to dispense options, wit, and or wisdom. Uncle Mike, you know, I'm out there. I'm just overwriting my spy calls. I'm enjoying life. I don't really need to pay attention to much else because, you know, what could happen in a very staid index like spy that could disrupt my covered call writing? Why would I need to pay attention to such a thing, sir? What could possibly happen? Oh, the great mystery of all option trading. Mark, the dividend. Dun, dun, dun! Ah, the dividend. The dividend is something that oftentimes is overlooked, and beginning traders sometimes, when they overlook it, think that they are getting something for nothing. They've conquered the market. They've figured out how they can get a license to print money, and they've only been studying options for three weeks. Man, they're smart. Well, let me tell you about the old dividend. Uh, a couple things with a dividend. Let's first take a step back for a second, and let's just uh, say that we're just trading stocks. Uh, if you own a stock and a stock declares a dividend, uh, you have and you want to get paid the dividend, uh, which is a disbursement of profits from the company, or uh, maybe more borrowed money from the company. Either way, that they're giving out as a dividend, whatever the case may be, it's income to shareholders. Uh, if that's the case, to, if that is the case then you have to be in the stock uh, the day before the ex-dividend date. And so when you're in the stock the day before the ex-dividend date, then that qualifies you to be a part of that dividend. So let's say XYZ stock's trading at uh, $100 a share, and they declare a $1 dividend, and the ex-dividend date is this Friday, December 20th. Well, that means you need to own the stock uh, the day before the ex-dividend date. And if you do that, you can then turn around and buy the stock Thursday, sell the stock on Friday, and you will collect this dividend. Uh, this dividend, uh, the payment date will be, I don't know, four weeks, five weeks in the future, whatever they decide to do. But it doesn't make a difference if you're in the stock or not on the payment date, but so long as you're in it the day before the ex-dividend date. So the way this also works is in the world of stock trading, you can also sell a stock short meaning you're, you're bearish on a stock, so you can sell it short, meaning selling it without owning it. By doing that, if the stock goes lower, then because you're short the stock, you gain money on it, then you buy it to cover the stock at a lower price, you make money. Of course, if the stock goes higher, you lose money on it. Now, in the world of shorting stock, though, works a little bit different. Everything that I had said about the dividend, let's say that uh, you're short the stock, you have to actually pay for that dividend out of your pocket. But Mike, that is so unfair. How can that be? Su how can such a thing be? Well, on that, let's assume that there is uh, absolutely no buyers or sellers in that same stock that day. Then that stock will go lower by an amount equal to the amount with which that dividend was. So it balances itself out. Now, 
let's go into the option world for a moment. And let's say that uh, you're short a call option. If you're short a call option, whether it's it's on a covered call or whether it's a naked call or whether it's part of a spread, uh, make sure that uh, you turn up your volume and listen to the words that I'm about to say because they're very important. And especially if you're, and I'm sorry, and if you're in an SPY uh, for any of those things with which I had mentioned, I'll give you a moment. Go ahead and turn up your volume. All right, very good. Now, now that I'm talking to you much louder than I was a second ago, uh, hear the importance of this. If you are short a call option, and it is Thursday, and that call option is in the money. And let's say it's significantly in the money, and that call gets exercised or you get assigned. All of a sudden, you're going to wake up Friday morning and being short a bunch of stock. You're thinking, holy cow, why did they exercise that call option? And the reason is, is because they wanted, they, or I should say him or her, the person on the other side of the trade, wants to collect that dividend. And oftentimes, if you let's say that you want to buy a deep in the money call, you exercise the option that day, then in theory, you could actually collect a dividend and have much less risk of just, than just simply owning the call instead of owning the stock. And you only have to be in it for one day. Now, we can talk about dividend spreads another day. There's people that actually do that as a specific strategy. But what I want to talk about is the people that are just uh, short call options. So if you have a covered call, and it is in the money, and you're concerned that you might not be in that stock, well, a reason that a lot of people exercise calls is because they want that dividend. If the call's in the money, make sure you take a look at it and see, is this something that would make sense to exercise if I was the other side of this? Same would hold true if you are in a uh, vertical call spread where you're short uh, a call, uh, or a horizontal or diagonal call spread where the call is in the money. So with that, how can I tell if I'm at risk of being assigned? Well, let's say that you're short the SPY 350 call and it's worth a penny. Uh, you're probably not at risk of being assigned. The way with which you take a look at it is that you see what the upcoming dividend is for SPY. Uh, you can just Google search it. And you want to see, is there more extrinsic value in my option than that amount? And is it, is it significant? So let's say that the dividend that SPY declares, and I, I don't know it off the top of my head, but let's just say it's roughly $1.50 for this quarter. If you have more than, if, let's say you have $3 of extrinsic value in your call option, aka time value, they're probably not going, the person on the other side of the trade is probably not going to exercise the option. If there is um, maybe 50 cents of extrinsic value in that call option, well, that you can pretty much make uh, a sizable wager saying that they are going to exercise it uh, if they're on the other side of the trade. So if you have any concerns with that, call up your trade department. Uh, and the bottom line is that are you short calls on SPY, uh, especially expiring this week? If that's the case and you're concerned, if you're going to get assigned early, call your trade desk at your broker. The guys at Fidelity, I'm sure, are going to get calls on this uh, and or uh, if you're one of my clients, call me and you're concerned with this. I'll talk to you about it. If you're not one of my clients, call me as well. I'm happy to talk to anyone about this uh, just because uh, this is something kind of near and dear to my heart uh, as a retail trader most of my life or most of my career or a lot of my career until I became professional about 10 years ago. And um, I think that it's something that you really need to have a firm understanding of. Uh, and once again, if you do call me and you're not a client, I can't give you specific advice, but I can definitely give you general uh, answers to help you to get to where you need to be. So with that, if you have in the money calls on SPY, look at them, look at them, look at them. And that is the strategy block for today. Mr. Song of Ice and Fire, I'd have to imagine this time of year with spy land, a lot of Fidelity clients are writing calls out there. Is this, uh, is this a topic of conversation? You getting a lot of calls on this or maybe is it after the fact when people call you up and say, what the heck happened? Uh, how does this usually play out for you guys? Uh, <laughs> so we actually do get quite a few calls on this. Um, unfortunately, it is a lot of the times the aftermath that we get that call. We really hope that um, people do exactly as you explained. Look, take a look, see if you're in the money, give us a call to talk it through. Uh, I, we always, when we talk about the idea of the, uh, the assignment risk on those, we always, uh, you know, state when you're going through your trade process, 
make sure to look out for those binary events like the X dividend day because that can definitely play a pivotal role. Um, I would say there are a few times that we will get the call before that X dividend day and have that discussion. Uh, as a matter of fact, that phone call that we got uh, about a short box spread was on SPY and the X dividend day was coming down the line. Uh, so that actually started that whole box spread discussion we had um, way back when. Um, but uh, I will say a lot of times we will get the call after they get a sign and they find out they have to pay that dividend. Um, it happens way too often, and this is something that gets overlooked way too way too often. Uh, so I, I would, if anything goes to heart, make sure to take a look for that ex-dividend day. That is something that the majority of, tr- of traders just overlook, and it's unfortunate. Yeah, for something as simple and as commonplace as this is, it happens all the time, like clockwork. It still seems to catch people unawares all the time. So, yes, hit up Uncle Mike or if you're Fidelity client, hit up the folks at Fidelity. They can walk you through it before it happens to you. As we keep on rolling into our final segment, it is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, listeners, let's dive right in. Mr. Rock Lobster, we'll start with you, sir. What is on your radar for the coming week, sir? You know what's weird is this feels like one of the first times in a long time I can think, what's on the radar? Nothing. <laughs> it's a really odd, you know, earnings aren't until January. You know, we got to, you know, if we say Santa Claus rally, we'll probably get hate mail. We've already had it. It's sort of like, you know, I hate to say it, but I'm like, okay, iron condor, hedge with some mixed call spreads and forget about it. That's that's about where I am. We're looking for like some dumb time spread. I'm not, I don't see a whole lot happening on the upside because essentially all the stuff that everybody's been wanting 3200 trade deal it's like it's here it's happened it's great and yeah so i think if anything will get mr tusa his single digit vix it will be the market just going sideways until we have another level of news so um even with the vix at 12 maybe that type of thing so i i would like to say i guess we have i think i have walgreens is coming out in the early january uh, there might be some other retail coming out, but for the most part, um, I have to admit, I'm a little, I'm in the kind of meh stage, the ambivalent stage on here, what's going on. You're more focused on the on the ice rink than on the markets uh, for the rest of the year here. Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you, sir. What is on your radar for the rest of the week? Santa Claus rallies, big trade news, all of it. We're moving a lot. No condors or time spreads. No, just kidding. Um, I just wanted to see if we can, uh, right now, the, net, the, the mental barrier for the marketplace or the key number is 3,200. I think we topped out today so far at 3,197. So I wanted to see if we can break through that uh, and just seeing what uh, could happen on the Twitter account uh, and seeing if anything will happen to see if uh, the president wants to take the holidays off or he wants to uh, do a few things to get up just a little bit higher so that way he can say going into election season. Last year we made... Uh, X percent, just to get that number just a little bit higher. So we'll see where things go with it. And uh, ultimately, more buyers and sellers, uh, or more sellers than buyers. And Mr. Song of Ice and Fire, last but not least, sir, what is on your radar and what are the Fidelity Legions paying attention to for the rest of the week? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're, you know, it's something I'm keeping an eye on is that 3,200 level. Uh, I know it's mainly psychological, but uh, still interesting to watch around there. Um, also, it's a, with the VIX being down below 12, which is just baffling. But I guess it makes sense, um, you know, because we, we are just continuing, just seem to, to create a new all-time high each and every day. Um, as well as, you know, we, we do have the the impeachment vote going down to the full house. Uh, so uh, interesting to see that. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if they actually – sign the the trade deal and go through with it um it sounds like they're going to but uh you know i'm still waiting for actual confirmation of that just when it's done and over with it sounds like it it's there uh but i, I want to see it uh signed and and on to what phase phase two at this point uh would be the next step so 
uh, those are the things that I was I was going to take a, uh, that I'll be watching along the way. All right, listeners, that little bit of music means come to a close here for the option block. But if you're saying, you know, hey, I like a little more in my ear holes, I like to talk a little more volatility, all that good stuff. Well, stay tuned. We'll be back in exactly an hour, a little more than that, <laughs> an hour and three minutes. Back with the crypto rundown, gonna have some fun guests on joining me talking about. If you, if you said to yourself, "Hey, you know, I wouldn't mind a something like the VIX, but for Bitcoin itself to to measure and track and harness all that crazy volatility out there." Well, we got got a great guest for you to talk just that. In the meantime, of course, if you're listening to live, we'll we'll pipe in some fun stuff in there for you. Maybe a little bit of uh, Options Playbook Radio breaking down some fun plays and some names you love, like Roku and everything else. <laughs> and we'll be back in exactly an hour. But before we go, we're not leaving yet. Let's go back around the horn and see what everyone else has that may interest you. Let's start in the land of the Song of Ice and Fire. Mr. Collins, sir, if folks are intrigued, they want to kick the tires over there in Fidelity Land, where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, so uh, certainly check it out on our website at fidelity.com slash options. Uh, you can see all the different analytical tools that you can use that can uh, guide you through your trade process, uh, as well as seeing all the resources that are available. Uh, in our learning center, as well as our online virtual classes that we teach. And if you want to have a discussion, uh, you know, let's say about you know ex-dividend days and, and selling call options and that assignment risk, give us a call, 877-907-4429. Uh, you know, certainly we're here to help you out. And if you'd like to have a discussion about strategies and you know that assignment risk, you can always ask to speak to Trading Strategist or, or you can ask to speak with me directly. We're here to help you out in any way that we can. There you go. Fidelity.com slash options is the place to go to begin your journey. And Uncle Mike, if I want to begin a journey in options-oriented wealth management, where should I go? What should I do? By all means, come to stcharleswealth.com. More than happy to discuss how we actually use these crazy products in the wealth management circle. And uh, once we talk about them, you realize they're not so crazy. They really make a lot of sense. And that's what we can talk about. Uh, StCharlesWealth.com. We'd be more than happy to have a conversation with any of our listeners. There you go. StCharlesWealth.com. Kick the tires and light the fires. And Mr. Rock Lops, your last but not least, if I'm intrigued by such things as volatility newsletters or webinars or maybe even some text alerts throughout the day, maybe some live chatting, where should I go? What should I do, sir? Uh, come to Oxford.com and go to uh, look for... Our uh, our members uh, member area, where our membership area, you can check out the vol newsletter. I will be revamping it a little bit this year, mostly just to start with some more basic vol education. Um, and uh, so that way, people that subscribe to the newsletter will basically by the end of the year they will be vol trading pros. That's the idea, um, and uh, I think uh, they'll really enjoy it. There you go. Optionpit.com is the place to go. Sign up for the newsletter. You, too, can become a vol trading pro. And on behalf of the Rock Lobster and Uncle Mike and the Song of Ice and Fire and D myself, I want to thank all of you for downloading, streaming, subscribing. If you're listening live, stay tuned. We'll be back in exactly an hour. I'll give you some good stuff in between. We'll be back to talk Bitcoin VIX and all that good stuff. Skew volatility. Lots of stuff going on out there. We'll get to it. And, of course, otherwise, we'll be back again just later this week for the advisor's option. We'll be back again on Thursday for Twifo and, of course, for another episode of The Option Block. The Option Block is brought to you by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. 
For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com. <laughs>